In this video, we are going to cover very important part and very basic part of any programming language that is the data types. Whenever I say something like data type, that simply means which type of data I am going to process. Like whether it's a numeric value, a string, character, boolean or maybe any user defined data type. So as here, whenever you will be working with C-sharp, it is a strongly typed language. So whenever you are going to process anything, any data, you must know its type. Whenever you are going to define any variable that may vary throughout the program or a constant, or whenever you are going to define some functionality which is returning you some value, and whether it's taking the parameters for some methods, in each and every step, you will have to mention the data type at a particular position. So here, as you can see, like whenever you talk about the .NET library, there is something we get called common type system, CTS, which defines the, all the data types in itself, whichever are compatible with the C sharp as well. Maybe the name in the .NET CTS and in C sharp will differ but internal definition is going to be same all right so here you can simply classify the data types as per the basis of memory allocation into two parts that is the value types and reference types here i am classifying it on the basis of memory allocation apart from that definition wise you can call it primitive non primitive and so on but here Currently, I am discussing on the basis of the memory allocation. So, let's see what is a value type and reference type. Value type is something which will allocate the value in the stack. Whether reference type is something which will store the value in the heap, but it will store the reference in the stack. Now, let's discuss what is this stack and heap all about. So, basically, if I say like this is the area where your program is going to allocate the memory. So let's classify it into two parts or I should actually classify it into one only part that is stack. Stack is the main area which is responsible for all the memory allocation in your program. Whether whenever your main method or any other method will get loaded, it will also be loaded in the stack only. And whenever you will define any variable, it will allocate the memory in the stack. Let's take an example. Let's say I defined a variable int a. So it will definitely allocate some area. How much? Let's say here it will take 4 bytes. Alright. So what will it do? It will allocate an area here in the stack with the name a and that will be a 4 byte area all right or 32 bits whatever you can say and whichever value it will take it will be going in this area itself like if you say int a is equal to 10 that simply means 10 will be here in this zone but if i talk about the reference type then let's say string is one of the data type which is of reference type let's say I assign any value inside it in the double quotes. So what will happen? This S will allocate the memory in the stack, all right? But the value, whatever you will store here inside, let's say I store TP. So this TP will come in somewhere else, where a dynamic area which will be created at runtime called heap. It will not be there from the very beginning. This area, I just draw it like that, but heap will be in action whenever it is required. Alright, so this TP, this value will come and get stored here and what will be in the stack? It will store the reference of this particular point. So what will happen means what is the benefit of that in the background? Suppose I will start reading this variable called A, what will happen? As I said, stack is the major area where you will allocate the memory. So all the fetching will be started from the stack itself. So I will come here in the stack in the programmable area, which is being occupied by your program. Will come here, will find A 
and we'll get a value let's say 10 and we will print that or we'll do any operation but in case I want to go for the string s let's say string s is equal to tp what will happen again we will start doing the searching from stack only but we will not get any value there rather we will get a reference and following that reference we will come here in the stack sorry in the heap and there I will get the values so basically if I compare the time taken by a reference type that is string is more than the time taken by a value type that is integer in this case so the question arises why we are going for these things basically whenever you talk about the stack stack is always fixed memory area that simply means like doesn't matter how many operations you are undergoing in an application but all the major memory allocation will be done by stack only all right now if you will start storing the value of reference types such as strings array objects maybe any class thing a bulkier object which will take maybe a large space if I will start storing all those things in a stack this stack will be overloaded and our program will be terminated so just for that particular purpose whichever data type I will feel like that it will occupy some larger space dot in developers categorize them in the reference type so that reference size will remain same all right but the value the major bulkier value will be taken care by this heap so that stack will not get overloaded and it will maintain the performance of our program as well so this is about the value type as I said which will store the value on the stack and reference type which will store the reference on the stack and data on the heap so here in the value type let's discuss what are the different types here like you can classify them in the two parts that is structure and enumerations all right we will discuss the structs and enums user defined structs and enum later in the video series but we'll discuss about this structure now like here in the c -sharp .net, there are so many predefined structures that we will get like byte as byte integer unsigned integer short unsigned short unsigned long long float double decimal character boolean all right so these are some number of data types which we are getting here and in the dotted framework like these are the names which we will use in the c sharp all right but in the dotted framework like in the cts what are their names for example if i will say int in the dotnet framework in the system namespace we will get a structure called int32 and all the data types here are written as the case sensitivity all right and here is the size allocation by each data type since they have the static memory allocation so whatever value they will store inside itself will have the limit so here these are the types which we will be using in our implementation right after this session and uh, next is the reference types where you can simply see that string arrays object classes whether predefined or user defined similarly interface and delegate these are some of the reference types available all right so let's see in a practical implementation how we can deal with these data types and some of them we will discuss later like delegates interface user defined classes we will deal with them all later as we have already discussed about the data types so now whenever we will define any variable or constant we can use any of those data types for example if I use int a is equal to 10 let's say I assign any value so this a identifier is by default a variable but if you want to make it constant you can just pass a const keyword that simply means that throughout this program you will not be able to change the value of a again so as per your requirement you can choose whether you want to make it as a variable or constant and similarly with any data type let's take another example where I will take a variable of integer type I will assign any value and let's take one more variable of string type 
and again let me let's uh, take a name like string s is equal to any value okay now when you define the integer as we have discussed like integer is a value type that means it will take a fixed space how much that is 32 bits if I want to see this description of this I can simply right click over this and I can say go to definition or directly you can press F12 and here you can see like again in system namespace you will get a structure of int32 there are two constant properties here that is the max value and min value so obviously you will not be able to put the value more than this and not lesser than this it will be changed if you will use unsigned integer but by default when you say int it is signed integer but you will not see anything such that in the case of string because string is a reference type when I say reference type that simply means that it doesn't have a fixed memory size if it does not have any fixed memory size you can put any size of data inside that particular data will be on heap and the reference will be in the stack like here I can give a meaningful name to the identifiers like string name int age and along with that I assigned a value now if I want to print it I can simply print name and age inside the console dot right line as you can see I have not passed any double quotation mark right here because I need to access the name of the identifier so as soon as I will execute this program you can see we will get the values like John and 30 if you want to pass any message along with that let's say user name is and then you can use this plus symbol to concatenate this constant string and this variable string similarly you can do the same thing right here as well so now the output will be more logical and clear as username is John user age is 30 if you want to make them all in a single line what you can do I will just pass a plus symbol again after this and will cut everything from here and I will put it right here again but now everything will come in just single line like this if you want to break the line again what you can do is you can use a slash n right here which will do the line break thing okay so output is as we have already seen previously now if you are using multiple constants or variables right here to print in a single statement that may go complex so I'll just comment this one and will use another way to print the values so in this console.write line what I'll do is user name is whenever you need to pass the value of a variable or constant you will pass the placeholder these curly braces are called the placeholders and inside which I have passed the index 0 after that I want a line break user age is and then again a value so username is a placeholder with index 0 user age is again a placeholder with index 1 now name comma age after this first argument what, whatever you will pass it will be the 0th index then it is 1 index if you will pass anything more that will be index 2 3 4 and so on so this name which is currently at the 0th index will go and print here that is username is whatever you will print and age will be printed right here so let's see as you can see the very same output now if you want to take the input from the user because for now every time when you will execute this you will get the same output so I can take a use input from the user using the method of console class again that is called the read line 
So this read line, if I'll put the mouse over this read line method, I can see the structure of that. And you can see this read line method will return the string. So this string will go and get assigned to this variable called name. Similarly, I can do this for the age also. So console.readline again for taking the input of age. But here you can see this red line which represents the error. If I'll put the mouse over this, you can see it is returning a string. Before this is assigned to this variable age, I need to convert this string into the integer so that it may be a successful assignment. So in dot parse is the method which will convert this incoming string to the integer for us. And uh, now we are successfully taking the input for both name and age. So let's re-execute this one. And uh, here I will put Steve 32 and you see username is Steve, user age is 32. I can also use one more method right here that is console.clear which will clear the console in the runtime. And to make this inputs more logical, let's pass some message before it. So now as you can see, enter username enter user age is the message. Now let's re-execute this. And yes, it is much clear. Steve 32. Username is Steve, user age is 32. So this is how you can start doing some basic operations with the data type. You can define the constants and the variable and you can start assigning the values along with the retrieval.